assalamu alaikum hi everyone warmly welcome to all of you with another important video and of course uh, a very technical and little bit critical question asked by one of our subscriber you know what is the safe isolation procedure for hydrocarbon pipeline so uh, since we all know in oil and gas industry you know mostly the hydrocarbon pipelines are almost everywhere even if you go to the oil refineries, rig sites, even the pipelines from the rig sites, the refinery, even GOSP, like gas oil separation plant, you know, everywhere, mostly we see uh, the pipelines, especially relevant to hydrocarbon. So in that scenario, of course, uh, we have to discuss a little bit technically, uh, you know, instead of giving individual answer to that particular guy, I decided why not to share uh, uh, my experience and knowledge, you know, which can, uh, I'm sure, going to add value into your uh, insights also. But of course, uh, since uh, we all are a part of Daily Learning Club at our YouTube channel, so uh, name trainings on. But if you can add value and you have any comment, I would appreciate, you know, if you can guide this process. But uh, whatever knowledge I have, as per the Saudi Aramco guidelines, I'm going to share with all of you. You know, before we discuss uh, isolation procedure, it's very much important to understand the five fatal failures. You know, you have reliability engineers, you have maintenance technicians, you have uh, state-of-the-art safety engineers on board, work permit issuers, receivers, CSE supervisors, permit, you know, plenty of uh, competent people are working together. But since this kind of isolation and loto is a particular technical procedure, that is why they have separate uh, permit, you know, EULB, equipment of line break permit. And even in one of the theories around to claim, you know, uh, while issuing you uh, this uh, EULB permit, still they consider it's a hazard. That means because of these five fatal failures. What I mean is even you use uh, the best methods, uh, the best technical methods for hydrocarbon isolation, still there is, uh, you know, the chance of uh, these five fatal failures. So let's discuss, first of all, the five fatal failures. One of the failure is uh, stop equipment. You thought uh, the equipment is stopped and it's not going to be restarted, but unfortunately, uh, your isolation and loader uh, procedure or the things you have done, well, it doesn't work actually. So anytime it's uh, restarting, and uh, no more chance to escape because this is the only procedure once energy became uh, uh, uncontrolled it's hard to get second chance you know then disconnect from power source you thought that it's all like no power is coming and uh, it's completely isolated but unfortunately it's not so well, you know the power source is not 100 percent disconnected or re-energized uh, because of some uh, some sort of failure for sure. The removal residual energy, sometimes we think 99 point, uh, you know, 99 percent energy is removed, could be oil, gas, or especially from the confined space, or even from the hydrocarbon lines, you know. But still, some of the residual energy, which can convert into fumes, and you know, that is why always we claim for hot work, we truly need to ensure uh, zero percent LEL, you know, the lower explosive limit. And uh, why we need 0% LEL? Uh, because that is uh, where we can uh, work confidently when there is a hot work. But of course, you know, for uh, if your isolation procedure is not followed uh, technically sound, and still, you know, the residual energy is still remained inside, of course, you know, that could be catastrophic, right? And again, hard to get second chance, God forbid. And a lot of incidents happen if you go to the history of 100 years, our smallest mistakes, you know, or is because of residual energy. You know, at starting point, you thought it's not a problem. The moment you start welding or you started your uh, activities inside, suddenly it's boost up and continual gas monitoring. Most of the cases not there. So uh, prevent number four fatal failure is prevent unexpected restarting. You know, unexpectedly restarted. You thought it's not going to be restarted. You properly locked that either it's electrical energy or mechanical or gravity or motion or pressure or hydraulic in other words but still it's restarted so clear the area before restarting uh, of course you know there are you know, we always discuss uh, three domains for every process in the world is 
before, during, and after. So before, we definitely have a solid plan and we execute it during this plan is well followed. So the output is uh, quite good. But what about uh, if you didn't play the area, like no housekeeping or you forgot some tools or equipments in other words, and on the other side, if you put some blinds or some sort of uh, other things, God forbid, and if it's not there, so area need to be well clear and head count and everything is part of that uh, clearing the area. So, but still five fatal failures, before we learn anything about loto or isolation, we must have to bear in our mind, even to be highly technical at experts with us, still, you know, there is a chance of five fatal failures. Now let's start, uh, 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 you know, the, the examples of equipment mostly requires isolation, could be pipelines, electrical breakers, motors, pumps, compressors, vessels, tanks, confined spaces, hydraulic presses, and thin fans. Uh, here in, in this video, uh, my focus would be mostly like pipelines and uh, even somewhat uh, uh, these vessels and tanks or confined spaces or uh, thin fan also we can discuss at some level. Okay? But these are the equipment which required isolation. Now, what steps normally we follow to uh, perform isolation? Number one is we need to identify the energy or equipment to be isolated. Of course, these are the hydrocarbon pipeline. That is the title of our video of today. But in section two of hazard energy checklist in your EULB permit or hot work or whatever permit you need to get for completing this particular job, of course, you need to complete hazard analysis checklist with some controls, of course, and counter signatures if required from the affected organizations for better communication. And for isolation, what we truly have to follow is turn off everything. You know, and then specialized PPs may be required. Look at the picture. If you see the picture, proper scrubber, full, you know, RPE, respiratory protection equipment is there. And especially if opening the line in toxic service. So, and on the other side, remove and dissipate all stored energy may require ULB permit. So we need ULB permit in most of the cases. Now, when do we isolate? Of course, it's quite clear, but we want to, uh, repair something or we have a maintenance project or might be we are going to enter into a confined space so if we are going to enter in a pipeline in a tank in a vessel of course we need uh, isolation you know before we get entered and what are the methods uh, we will we will discuss as per so the around guidelines but uh, before isolation no harm to learn you know the isolation and local steps prepare for shutdown apply isolations and uh, you know apply approved lock and then of course you need to tag clear clear the work area try try means the validation that your isolation loto is done successfully and you need to double check validate that is done perfectly and there isn't any chance of five fatal failures or one of the five fatal failures which i discussed uh, you know before i started talking about the technical other methods. Now, this is just kind of an example, you know. If you see, uh, there are pipelines, there is a fin fan, there is a motor, that means electrical energy is there, mechanical energy is there, some liquid hydrocarbon line, pipelines are there. So how we are going to, so it's a downstream and upstream lines are well attached, walls are there. So if you are the one going to isolate or put lock of tag, what would be your method? Of course, you will discuss or motor need to be switched off, the breaker need to be turned off, or you will remove the wires. That is how, uh, or you will remove the belt also. Maybe that's all you will be thinking, you know, to isolate the motor or to lock or tag it. And for fin fan, of course, you will be using mechanical block or somewhere, or the chain, you know. And for the walls, you will drain out. There is a center wall, of course. You have to drain out the liquid. Might be you will go for, uh, uh, you know, water wash, steaming process also, purging process as well. Then you close the wall and lock and tag. But if it is a confined space, of course, uh, uh, blinding and disconnection, that uh, only two methods are acceptable for confined space isolation. Like single block wall and double block and bleed is not acceptable for confined space isolation. So we will discuss in detail in the next video. Now, for the process piping and uh, equipment isolation, especially for chemical hydrocarbon, and that is the uh, 
uh, crux of our today's video, the title, uh, you know, the isolation procedure for hydrocarbon piping. So there are four methods as per our guidelines. They talk about uh, single block to wall, double block and bleed, disconnecting piping and blend. But the safest and the best method, especially for the confined spaces, is disconnecting piping and blending. But of course, still no harm to learn what is single block wall and double block and bleed. But both methods are not acceptable for confined space isolation. That's you truly have to remember. Now, single block wall, if you are using that one, what you have to do is fully close the wall, attach, chain, lock and tag, drain the pipeline, and also test for leakage. But uh, since I mentioned uh, earlier also, not approved for hydrocarbon service or confined space entry. Same with double block and bleed, at the same line have two blocks, which can be closed, but still that method is not acceptable, you know, for confined space isolation. Even in the middle, you have a drain wall, so you can uh, drain out all the liquid, you can again water wash, uh, you know, steaming process and purging process to bring that early and zero percent if you have any hot food activity, especially for uh, these pipelines. So, lock and tag two connective walls in the same line, open drain wall, check for passing, not approved for confined space entry, even not approved for hot work if pipe contain hazardous material. So even, you know, this uh, double broken bleed is not acceptable for any pipeline containing hazardous material, especially hydrocarbons, right? Now, <clears throat> so what is the safest method for isolation? It's disconnection. Disconnection, how are we gonna do it? Uh, use a fully rated blind cannot be fitted. Like, you know, before disconnection, of course, we try blinds. What is blind? In the next slides, we will discuss a little bit technical. Uh, drain and purge the line and checks for, check for leakage, long-term maintenance method, seal or cover, open ends, approved for confined space entry. So disconnection is an approved method for confined space isolation, okay? Same way, we talk about uh, uh, blind. If you see, there's some pictures like blind flanges there, straight blind and also spectacular blind, but it's a solid metal plate, you know, two five flanges on the end of a disconnected pipe. So, but the point is the selection of this uh, blinding should be based on size, rating, and location. You know, the rating capacity, how much pressure, how much liquid, you know, need to be stopped with this blind, but still uh, uh, sometime you believe it's not uh, the best one, you go for disconnection actually, if it is a long-term project for one month. And that's why maximum uh, extending the permit, we have one month, you know extension for the permanent closure. Like one shift, then one more shift, then at some, uh, you know, one week or maximum for one month. Now, process piping and equipment isolation, we use blind. Look at, uh, you know, the picture where we have gasket and the flange blind. And identify blinds on a blind list. You must be familiar with the location and better to prepare a log sheet of other blinds. And then, you know, you must be familiar how many blinds are attached, where and uh, you have to remove in a very sequence. And if you, God forbid, if you forget, even a single blind still there, and you just open the lines, then again, no chance to stay, right? So protect blind matting surfaces, only use matching gaskets. Facility made blinds use once and then destroy. So if you are locally producing or fabricating any blind, that should be used only once, and then it need to be destroyed. But still a lot of, uh, you know, technical requirements you have to meet with. And then uh, approved for confined space entry, this blinding, you know, this blind method is also acceptable for confined space isolation. So if uh, a little bit, even though the presentation is more relevant to the hydrocarbon process pipeline, which we already discussed, but no harm to share, you know, some more information related to hydraulic and the pneumatic equipment is a pressure. So it's a stored energy, potential energy. Of course, it's need to be uh, removed or released. So that's why we need to depressurize or relieve pressure, use mechanical blocks for equipment that may move. Look at the pictures, you know. So wherever we have hydraulic pneumatic energy, that's required some special methods to make sure, you know, they are not going to be, uh, um, Uncontrolled, actually. Now, 
especially since we have a lot of restricted areas and confined spaces, especially in oil and gas industry. So uh, let's talk about confined space isolation. Of course, uh, it's, uh, it's help us to prevent from flammable toxic and oxygen displacing gases from entering the space. We fill the dead space between isolation and confined spaces. And also we, you know, check for interconnected equipment that may need isolation. We understand the complete uh, uh, layout and the drawing of uh, that lines. And then accordingly, we decide, you know, we identify the best isolation points. Either we use blinds or we disconnect the pipelines, whatever method we apply. But blinding and disconnection, these are the safest methods approved for confined space isolation. So confirm adequate isolation lock and tag. Like if electrical, mechanical energies are there, lot will work. But in most of the cases, not most of the cases, especially for confined space isolation, if the word isolation is being used, we have to use blinds or disconnection. So that is why the last line is very clear. Blinds or disconnection of piping are approved for confined space entry isolation. So guys, uh, thank you very much for your learning passion. So I hope uh, uh, this video will give you some, even though a little bit technical, but I tried my level best to give you some insights. If you still have any confusion, feel free to WhatsApp me. My WhatsApp number is there. Or even you can comment. It's your channel. It's your training zone. It's your daily learning club. So let's learn from each other. But bear in mind, even Saudi Aramco, uh, you know, with 85 years experience, having a reliability engineers and state-of-the-art maintenance uh, department and experts, a lot of... Uh, uh, LPD loss prevention, the wheels and officers they have, plenty of safety engineers, managers, supervisors, you know, plenty of chemical engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers, a lot. But still, five fatal failures still are there. So, this is the most sensitive area where we truly have to be very much careful. And this is the area where Aramco must not trust on their contractors. And contractors must not blindly trust on a ramp for you. So that is why your job is to reconfirm that the isolation and lock of tagout is done with the correct methods and it's done under person and it's a successful isolation. And same way, a ramp will not trust on you if you are the one going to do it. That is why they have to revalidate that you have done your job perfectly, especially the isolation or lock of tagout. For uh, lock, you put your lock and you are the one keeping your key with you. You know, you put your lock, you keep your key, you are the one going to remove your lock. You don't trust, this is the only program where you don't trust on anybody because your life, your safety, your responsibility. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.